hello, I'm Marijn and I'm a second year student in Atlas and I'm, I wrote a paper on scaffolding as a tool in profile development and I'll be talking about it today. For, in order to do so, I need to take you back a little step and I'm going to sketch a scenario for you. You're a student and you're trying to solve a complex problem. This is where you are, your knowledge and skills. And the complex problem that you're trying to solve is outside of that range, so you need some help and some assistance from somebody. That could be this person. A teacher has a lot of knowledge and a lot of skills and knows a lot very wide from your range as well. If they're trying to explain it to you at this point, using very difficult vocabulary and using very different concepts than you're used to, it will ve be very hard for you to grasp what is actually uh, happening and that you can actually solve this problem. What they should do is be in the zone of proximal development as proposed by Vygotsky and he says that if you want to explain something to somebody, they should be together and meet you somewhere close to what you already know and what you already can do in order to be able to comprehend something new that you don't know yet. Maybe this problem is still without that range, but you need to gradually grow into this difficult problem that you're trying to tackle. And this is this zone of proximal development concept from Vygotsky is also at the root of the concept that I'm talking about today, which is scaffolding. Scaffolding is brought by uh, Wood, Brunner and Ross and they define it as the process in which learners, with the help of someone more knowledge knowledgeable to share and support uh, their problem solving, can perform more complex tasks than they would otherwise be capable of performing on their own. So what this means is that scaffolding is more of a process in which this is done, in which a more knowledgeable other helps you as a student or as a learner or just as a person in this world to do something that they could not do by themselves and get some guidance in how to do this. Um, there are three characteristics of scaffolding um, by Van Paul, Volman and Bijshuizen that I want to point out. The first one is contingency, and this really taps into that zone of proximal development. Contingency is about meeting a learner close to what they already know so that you can help them to get a little further than they could by themselves. The th second one is fading, and fading in this sense is the gradual withdrawal of the scaffolding. Because in the end, the goal is that a learner can do this afterwards, after you've helped them, by themselves. So hopefully, if you're scaffolding correctly, you can slowly with, withdraw your, your help to them and they can do it by themselves. And this is connected to the transfer of responsibility. The responsibility at first is with the learner. Whenever a learner asks for help, he puts a little bit of the responsibility that he has to learn something to another person, being the helper. And then throughout this process of scaffolding, this responsibility can get back to the learner uh, to be able to do it in the end themselves. Currently, scaffolding is mostly used in class settings and in learnings. Most research is done in this domain and most direct applications are put in this domain. But what I think, and looking at the definitions I gave before, I think it is a, a concept that can be very much widely used in a lot of different settings. In this presentation, I'm proposing one of these different uses of scaffolding in a different setting, and that being in profile development. For this, I'm going to use Atlas as a case study. Uh, we need to have a little bit of a background, uh, and that is with Atlas we work with self-directed learning. I'm not going to go very deeply into it, because a lot of other people will. But one thing I want to point out is that the first step in self-directed learning proposed by Brookfield is helping learners conduct a self-diagnosis regarding their projects that might be most helpful to learners. What this assumes is that learners have an idea of what they actually want to learn and would, what would be helpful for them as a learner. And if students come to Atlas, this is not always the case. Sometimes they have some sort of idea of what they want to do, but often they ha are very much open to new ideas, new concepts, skills, domains that they want to develop and want to discover. And this is hard if the assumption is made that you know what you want to learn. For this, in Atlas, we have our academic advisors. They help you to find electives, they help you to find courses that will be helpful to you, and maybe in the future even help you discover what masters are out there for you. So they take that <coughs> potential step of, of helping you in figuring out what to do. Uh, this process of, of helping you find out what the profiles would suit you 
I've given it the name, namely self-directed profile development. You can recognize self-directed in there, self-directed learning, but I do really think it's a separate step because profile development, I think, deserves special attention and is not just a part of learning, especially not in Atlas, where we're trying to discover what all the domains are out there and what skills are all out there. So I think it deserves a separate name. And I've also given it a new definition, or the first definition it can ever have, being the process leading up to self-directed learning in which individuals, with the help of others, take the initiative to discover, test, and iterate their academic interests to build their academic profile. Because that's what we're doing. We're trying to test and iterate through electives to build our profile. Let's get back to scaffolding. Because how does scaffolding, which I introduced to you in the beginning, help in this process? As I explained, scaffolding is somebody, can be done by somebody who can help you figure out new things that you could not buy yourself. Somebody that takes a little bit of the responsibility that you cannot have and handle in that moment, that they can help you to, to get further. And that is what I also see is necessary in self-directed profile development. Somebody can help you to see things you could not buy yourself. Somebody can be a conversation partner to get new ideas and to really discover what you can do. And that's where scaffolding comes in. And I think if you want to scaffold students, we first need to scaffold the mentors to learn how to scaffold the students. So I made a little um, concrete plan on how to scaffold the students as a scaffold for mentors. And I've given it some steps. And the first uh, few steps are, in a conversation, some questions that you should ask. The first question you should ask a student is about their interests, hobbies, and past experiences, which were very valuable learning experience to them. This is just to get, a no to get to know a student, get to know what they like doing outside of their academics, to get a feeling of what they like to involve themselves in, and from which learning experiences they get really excited. Second one would be about academic domains. What did they do in high school? What, choice, what other choices might they have made for a study if they would not have gone to Atlas? What courses have they taken so far? What projects did they really like and what things really excited them? Third thing to combine is skills. Some people really like to be involved with leadership. Some people like doing research. Some people want to be very good public speakers or super good academic writers. This also is really combined into what you can call your academic profile later. And I think that I after getting these ideas, I think actually it's not up to the, to the mentor first, but to the student first to make an analysis of what they've just talked about. Just asking somebody to talk about these interests, academic domains and skills will <laughs> give them ideas themselves as well. Hey, I've seen this connection between this skill and domain that makes sense. Hey, I can see these interests linking up with my academic interests. Hmm, how else does that work? So I would say to a mentor, first ask about their own analysis after asking these questions, their own ideas of what, what makes sense after this, what things would I now want to discover further. Of course, it's then also up to the mentor to add on to this. Of course, they don't need to know everything and the mentor also doesn't know all the domains out there. But if they have ideas about things that, connections that they s still see that might be useful, connections that still should be made, the mentor can help in this. And then the last step would be to plan for the future, which is actually two steps. First of all, in this moment, you want to, after this conversation, plan what courses you want to take, plan what projects you want to do, and what things you want to discover in the moment. But I also think, just like self-directed learning, that self-directed profile development is not a one-time thing. This is a conversation that happens throughout the semesters, that happens throughout the years of studying, and you iterate this. After every semester, for example, you come together again and you answer the same questions. And you ask yourself, hmm, did that, that course that I take really, was it as, as I hoped it to be? And, and did I really get inspired by it? Do I want to take it along to next steps? Or do I think this was enough for me in this domain? Let's move on to something new. This is an iterative process. This is my scaffold for mentors, to try and, and help the students a little better in, in finding their profile. I did this project because I heard about scaffolding before and I wanted to discover it further. And reading about it in literature made me realize that it's not that widely used yet. But looking at the basics of it, I think it has a very modern basis. It's about helping each other, it's about individual approach to learning, to development. It could be used in coaching, in all sorts of different settings. I've now pointed out one, being profile development. 
But I think there are a lot of more opportunities that we can take from this basis of scaffolding and I hope that maybe I've inspired, inspired at least one other person today to look into it and to see what else is out there with scaffolding as a basis. Thank you.